dear learners so this bpa program in your uh, there is a course on business environment and i shall take up unit 6 of your business environment course this unit 6 is all about industrial sickness you might have already studied the self learning material but in order to facilitate you to understand it better what i'll do based on the six learning based on the learning objectives of your unit on industrial sickness i shall take up some learning objectives the other learning objectives and i shall try to cover the entire unit in the videos so this is the part one of this video i shall have two more videos so part one of the video i shall take up these two learning objectives number one is to define industrial sickness what industrial sickness means industrial sickness we all fall sick is not it so industry is also fall sick and if adequate measures are not taken that industrial sickness will prevail and ultimately the industry will have to close its doors then we shall discuss about the external reasons for industrial sickness there are a number of reasons for industrial sickness why does industrial sickness happen there are a number of reasons in this video this part 1 we shall discuss or share some of the external reasons for industrial sickness first of all let us try to see the aspect of industrial sickness how can it be defined industrial sickness you see the problem of industrial sickness does exist equally in both the developing and developed countries it will be a wrong notion if we say that in the developed countries industrial sickness does not exist it is irrespective of the countries whether it is developed country or whether it is a developing country or whether it is an emerging economy whatsoever be the economic status industrial sickness exist everywhere there is a tendency right if adequate measures are not taken beforehand the industries fall sick be it small scale industries be it medium industries be it large scale industries there is a tendency that if not adequate measures are taken it will fall sick and this is applicable to any kind of economy then managing the problem helps in achieving higher growth and maintaining adequate level of employment if the industries are not allowed to be sick then what happens that the growth momentum will be sustained there will be growth and when there will be industrial growth the employment that will be absorbed in the industrial enterprises that also will be there there will not be any unemployment the persons who are employed in the industry they will remain employed so this will help in managing the problem of ensuring higher growth in the industries at the same time curbing the unemployment problem and based on all these in emerging economies developing economies right right we have to see that what could be the reasons and what is its extent so in terms of its extent how can we define there you know there is this c i s i c a sika sika the sik industrial company special provision act 1985 it defines a sik industrial company as an industrial company means it has to be registered industrial company and that to not for less than 7 years if it is, if it becomes sick within 7 years of its formation that will not be right as far as this part view of this act so the industries which are more than registered more than 7 years showing accumulated losses not just one time loss accumulated losses over the years and that is equal to or exceeding its net worth at the end of any financial year so it has to be not just accumulated loss as a small amount of loss may not right be justifiable enough to call it as a sick industry 
and then suffering cash losses also during that financial year and the immediately preceding year. So that has to be substantial right, in at least two years. Cash loss indicates computed loss without making provision for depreciation. Because the fixed machineries etc. that we shall procure, right, that has got a depreciation value and then the statement of accounts that is reflected. So this cash loss indicates computed loss without making provision for depreciation. So this is the definition of industrial sickness as far as SICA. So this, my dear learners, you have to remember it. Now that is the definition, but before that definition takes place, we need to be clear about the warning signals of industrial sickness. What are the signal, signals that might indicate that the industry might fall sick? One is shortage of liquid funds to meet the short term financial obligations of creditors. The creditors supply raw materials, they supply machineries, they supply equipment and if we are not in a position to pay their dues, that is an indicator that we have not been able to meet the requirements of the creditors or suppose we are not able to pay the taxes, statutory obligations. Growth of excessive inventories, the inventories are piling up. We have not been able to sell the inventories. That is another indication. Non-payment of interest on term loans. We avail credits from the banks, avail loans from the banks, but we have not been able to pay the installments. Under utilization of capacity, we have got right, say 80,000 tons of capacity, but we have not been able to utilize that. Let's say suppose 60,000 tons remaining unutilized and less return on investment compared with the prevailing industry there is an industrial norms and we are earning less than that so these are the signals of industrial sickness shortage of liquid funds non payment of interest not, no right they have not inability to pay taxes lesser roi compared to our competitors so some of the external causes of industrial sickness say power shortage because many times the industries do not produce power themselves they have to depend on the power supply of the electricity or boards or electricity supplying agencies but many times there is a shortage of supply and even if shortage of supply is not there there is a quality of electricity there is some problems there is a fluctuation of voltage etc so that creates problems for the functioning of the industries sometimes what happens the scarcity of raw materials and inputs including erratic supply suppose you are in the paper industry bamboos are in short supply so the paper industry will not be able to flourish, is not it? So scarcity of raw materials and inputs, including erratic supply. Suppose supply is there, but supply is not regular. Supply is highly erratic. Rise and fall is there. That is also a cause of industrial sickness. Natural calamities, right? Floods could be there, earthquakes could be there, cyclone could be there, any kind of digesters. These digesters also right, cause sickness in the industries. So natural calamities, these are all beyond control of the individual entrepreneurs. And frequent change in government policies, suppose uh, GST has come, along with GST, suppose the favorable things are there, suppose with some other, suppose the excise duty or say import duties, right, the different policies, suppose the uh, industry has not been able to adapt itself, so there is another change. So that might lead to the underperformance of an industrial unit. So these are some of the external causes of industrial sickness there could be some other causes also we shall discuss some of these in some of the later unit right later videos that say the other two parts of the video with this right we have covered the first part of your industrial this sickness unit thank you